Hi, my name is Alok Daipuria. I'm a technology coach for F3 Learning. Today we are going to learn how to build a simple web app using Python and Flask framework. As you know, Python is a very easy to use programming language. And Flask is a framework which is easy to build very simple web apps. So now we are going to see how will we build. Welcome to F3 Learning. Today we are going to learn how to develop a web application using Flask framework. First we are going to install the Flask. There are two ways we can install Flask. We can use the command line or we can use an IDE. In our case, I'm going to use PyCharm Community Edition. So launch the PyCharm. This is Mac. So similar steps are applicable for Windows as well. So after you have launched PyCharm, you can go to the top bar where you see preferences click on preferences and you will see different options under the default project you will see project interpreter and on the right side you will see all the different packages which are installed for that interpreter another thing to note is you want to make sure you have the correct interpreter setup Mac by default comes with uh, 2.6 and this is Mac El Capitano. I also have a Mac, uh, sorry, Python version 2.7 and Python 3.4. For this setup, we are going to use Python 3.4, but steps are very similar even if you want to use 2.7. The next step would be if you scroll down to the bottom you'll see a plus sign and if you put your mouse there it's gonna pop up with the tooltip with saying install click on that and it's going to launch a available package window you are going to type flask in the search bar at the bottom is go it's showing you know a lot of other uh, packages which have flask keyword for our case, we are going to install just the flask. And on the right side, you will see the description of the package and the version number. And there are you know, email addresses of the author and uh, the GitHub link. Select the flask and then scroll to the bottom where you will see install package. Click on the install. As you see, uh, it popped up a window where saying it was installing the flask and here at the bottom it said package flask installed successfully. Now that we have package flask installed successfully, if we go back and look in the install packages, you will see there is a flask package installed on. So if you already had it installed, it will be there. If you don't have it, you will see it over here. Another way to install would be through the command line. You can, uh, through the spotlight search, type terminal and it will launch a terminal for you. And on the terminal, all you do is pip3 install flask. So pip3 is a pip version which comes with Python 3.x. If you are on 2.7, you will type just pip install flask. Uh, now as you see I ran the command pip3 install and you see it's saying requirement already satisfied and it's telling the flask is in library this and these are the dependent frameworks which flask depends on so you see they are also installed. So now we are all set with the pip Flask installation. Now next step would be to create an app. We uh, 
will uh, it here you know on pie charm it shows packages installed successfully it gives you notification saying install packages flask so we'll just close this which is all now let's create a sample project create on new project here it's asking you for the project name location where do you want to have the project i will call it my flask app i want to use pipe turn 3.4 but you are free to use any other version for this purpose uh, our tutorial purpose it's 343 there are uh, python 3.5 is also out uh, feel free to try it out and let me know if you have any problems with that once you define the location the interpreter click on the create there you go we have a blank project created first thing we would do is in the project we'll create a python file so file new we'll pick the python file and we'll call it my flask app click on it it creates a blank python file first thing we would have to do is import flask so i'll say import flask and the way to do is from flask import flask now that should allow us to use flask in our code Second thing we would do is we'll create an instance of Flask. Right, so the way to do is app equals Flask. And we'll just create a name, use this variable. Now that created an instance of Flask app. Now one thing is because it's a web app and as you know in a web app we need to have URLs and take certain actions on it. So what we are going to do is create create URL and function mapping. For root or slash so what root or slash means is when you open a browser in this you go my http my website dot com and either you type in slash or leave it blank like this so this would be a root. I mean, there is no additional path to it. So we are going to create a mapping and the way to create is you write at sign, which is used in the email app dot route. And what's our route? Because it's a root mapping, we are just going to say create route So it is expecting a quotes. Oh, there is another typo. So good thing about PyCharm is it will, uh, any errors that you see, it will do this, uh, underline it with the red um, indicator. So this is the one, right? Okay. And here let's define a function called def index. It takes no parameter. You can ignore the error indicator for now because PyCharm is expecting you're gonna complete the function. And on 
in this function all we do is return hello from class so we just implemented a function named index which will map to the page URL slash and that's all to it right. the next step is we want to run it right. so the way to run it if this is just nice to have to prevent you know any issues while running your code accidentally you know misplacing stuff and what do you run is app dot run and there you go we wrote a first flask app let's run it run. run configuration is asking my flask app that's the correct one let's just run it and look at that at the bottom it's showing you uh, running on http thousand base base and this is a forever running process and if you want to terminate you're gonna see control c and it will abort it or you can also click on this rectangular red marker to abort your process but for now we want to test whether our app is really running so point to that and click and there you go it launched the browser and in the browser it says hello from flask and if you look at it it's running on port if, if so even if you put a slash here because we mapped it to a slash uh, or a root right it will still take us to the same location right and it says hello from flask there you go so this is our first simple app using flask Now you would say, this doesn't look like an app to me. Where is the fun? Okay. How about we create another mapping? We'll call it hello. I would always prefer to keep this code block at the bottom. Because people sometimes they just write, you know, uh, unstructured code and then app run if you write any code below this it's not going to execute because it's a forever running process so for now let's define another mapping right so we'll create a comment create another mapping named hello and this will help us to visualize how these mappings are mapping to the definition so we'll create another app dot route route this will say slash hello so created a new mapping and what do we do next we define a function for which will handle that mapping so we'll create a function called hello And what do we want to write? We can just write hello again. Save it. Now let's try it if it will take this new function. We'll go back, go to the URL and type in hello. Oh, it said URL not found. So in our URL, we gave slash hello, but it did not find. And the reason it did not find is it expects anytime you add a code, you have to restart. And the way to restart is you can just click on this green icon over here. right? And it says read on my flask app. Let's read on it. Now that it rerun, we'll again go back and we'll try to type in hello. 
there you go now when you we do hello slash hello it prints hello again we can add a variable to it let's say my name equals lock we can say hello again Oh, my name and let's we restart again now that's the only uh, thing we have to restart every time we make a code change but that should be fine I would again go slash hello and here it says hello again hello so you can see now the Python code is now being leveraged here we created a variable, gave it a name. Now, so far, so good. Now, I want to create a web page where I want to show it. Uh, it's basically HTML page and where I want to uh, use my variables. The way to do would be you create a new folder called uh, directory called templates and in the template directory I am going to create a HTML file and in the HTML file I'll just call it my profile right it created you can change the title if you want And here I am going to, to say hello this is a template so I created a template and I want to now show my profile so let's create another routing create mapping for my slash my profile we'll do the same thing again app dot route my profile def show my profile now as we see the method names doesn't have to match the URL your URL can be different and your function name can be different so in this case my profile in the web URL will map to show my profile which is fine and here now because this is a template we sh we need another function to import and so we go back to the top we'll say from flask import render template so render template is going to import so we imported it and what do we do here we just say return render template and here we give the template name and the template name is my profile.html. Let's restart this again. We go back to the browser, and here we'll say my profile. Yay! So now when we say my profile, it's rendering a template which is the HTML file and which is this one. So you can create a nice, let's make a modification where it says, hello, my name is Alok and I live in California.
if you want to throw in H your uh, HTML stuff, you can say H1, add a H1 tag. This is, oh, uh, we can just call it my profile page. And we'll say hello. If you want to do real HTML style message, we'll say hello. Uh, my name is hello. We'll make it bold. And we'll make it italic, italicized. Just to show you that it's really HTML is it's working. You go back again. Say, hey, my profile page. Hello, my name is Alok, and I live in California. Now, this is good. But we are saying, hey, this is the HTML page we rendered. Now, we're, what is Python doing in this page? So, how about we create a new form where a user can input the name and the place they live in. So that way you can, anyone can enter their details and it will show up on the page. So we are going to create another HTML file my profile form Add form so i'll just do simple uh, form action equals we'll we'll figure out the action right and we'll do method equals Get. You can do post also, uh, that's perfectly fine. And we can define, you know, it helps troubleshoot and you can later on, if you want more secure, you can convert it to post. I will not go into the intricacies of the method, assuming you are uh, familiar with it. If not, you can search for it, how HTML forms work. And this, first thing is we want to enter a name. So we'll say name, input, type equals text. We'll say name equals my name. I'll just add a line break for simplicity fake, fake, sorry, not fake state of residence and that would I'll still make it text for now Now one thing is you know action we need to add an action it means it needs to map a url so i'll just say add profile right it means we have to create a new mapping so let's go to this thing again create a mapping or add profile We'll add a function for we'll add profile. Now this add profile has to process the form parameters we are going to when we submit. So let's, how do we read? Let's read the form, uh, my name equals now this uses another library called request which is part of flask so we let's import flask import request 
you see the request there boom and we do request dot args dot get and this is where we are going to give the name of the parameter which we've added in the form and in this case this is my name I'll just do my name I'll copy paste to and what's the other one it's called state of residence I'll include that equals and it's gonna be very similar to this one so I'll just copy paste and make sure your variable names are correctly matching now the we have read the form values you can print them out if you like but all i am going to do is just pass them to the template and let's do that so we are going to use the same template as my profile.html right render render template So this is good it will still show you the same profile we saw last time but we want to use those variables we read from the form right let's how do we pass them so the way to pass is we have to set the name of the replacement parameter and this is going to be my name equals my name Now don't confuse these two variables. One is the placeholder in the HTML. Second is the variable of the Python. You can name it anything else if you want, right? If I call it, this is HTML page name to make it more descriptive. It should be fine. I'll call it HTML page state of residence and that should be state of residence now we created two variables called HTML page name and HTML page state of residence it means we need to have those defined in the pro my profile page so let's go back there and we'll make some changes there and what, what is the first thing? We are changing the variable name called uh, allope, right? And instead of allope, we want to set different values. So the way it, uh, we set placeholders is by two curly uh, brackets, opening, then the uh, placeholder variable name, and then close them with two curly brackets. Same thing we are going to do uh, for the state. So what was the name of the variable? It was HTML page state of residence. Let's copy this. And we do the same thing here. Two curly open, variable name, two curly close. Save the file. We'll save the myflaskapp.py file also and let's restart. Right, so now this is restarted. Let's see what happens when we do my profile page. We already had this open, right? So we open this. Let's refresh it. Oh, look at what happened. It says my name is, it's empty, and I live in uh, something, something. We don't know what is that. Okay. So let's go to add profile. Is it add profile? So here it says none, none, none. So actually, let, where is the form? Uh, we have to. OK, so we need a mapping to show the form. OK, we'll create a, another mapping to show the form. Add profile form. We'll change this to the 
let's restart it. Okay. Function name is conflicting. That's why it's throwing error. Let's start it again. Okay. So we go back to the browser and we are going to open the form. Bingo! We see the name and state of residence. One thing is missing is the submit form. Let's go back to the form. We'll include a submit form. Input type equals submit value equals submit okay. let's go back refresh the page okay there you go now here i'll send andy stay for writing uh, state of residence is arizona submit so it read the name and the state and it sent us to the ad profile uh, and rendered the page. And if you look at the URL, it says, you know, add profile and then it's passing the parameters we set up in the form. And so this is how the get will work. So this concludes a basic app using Flask framework. If you have any questions, please send me queries. My email address is, uh, I'll just type in, uh, let's create a new file. So I can type in my email address, so again, my email text. You can reach me at alok at f3learning.com. And our website is www.f3learning.com. Thank you for watching my tutorial. Hope you learned something uh, to build your fantastic apps. Thanks and bye.